Oh, I see a blooper reel coming. Pixelmator photo. What all does it have in it? Is it good? Is it not? Is it worth it? Uh, Looped.to, a new website for pointing everybody to your online presence. And we have a couple of rumors about the upcoming iPhones. Will they come true? Who knows? All this and more on the iPhoneography podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is uh, our last show before Christmas, obviously. And uh, quite, yeah, actually, it's going to be our last show this year. So um, uh, we've decided that we're going to have a special guest on with us. And uh, first, I will introduce my co-host, Mr. Dave Podner. Hello, David. Hey, Greg. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, You know, it's been... Of course, as a Canadian, all we ever do is talk about weather. <laughs> so it's been cold. We've actually got a just a light dusting of snow, but that's it so wow. far. Mind you, winter doesn't start for a couple of days, so that's okay. Well, um, actually, believe it or not, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? I wasn't sure if it was tomorrow, tomorrow. or the 22nd. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Nope. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Some, I guess sometime in the morning. So that means it's the shortest day of the year, and that means yes. that... The days are going to start daylight. getting longer. More daylight. Yes. More daylight. More daylight. Except, except, except for Craig. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to start getting a little darker, a little darker. Yeah. And by the way, happy birthday, Craig. <laughs> if anybody's listened to this show or Tiny Shutter for any length of time, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, we do have a guest with us tonight. Uh, it's a a guy that's no no stranger to the show, and it is Mr. Matt Hoffman. How you doing, Matt? I'm great, guys. Thanks for having me on tonight. It's good to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Um, so before we get into uh, uh, what we plan on talking about tonight, uh, Matt, just give us, you know, in a tweet, what you've been up to lately. Huh. In a tweet. Um <laughs> Jeez, I don't know if I could sum it up that quickly. Um, I've actually been shooting a lot lately. Um, I don't know if this is good to say on this podcast or not, but I I uh, acquired a Fuji camera recently, and that seems to have just really reignited my desire to get out and take pictures and stuff. So I've been shooting like a madman um, recently, just like anything and everything – and uh, yeah, that's been my my focus, I guess. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, hey, photography is photography, right? Um, you know, this is about iPhone photography, but photography is just what it is, and uh, it, it's I nice still, to. Yeah, I still do that. You know, um, not to say I don't shoot with my phone; still do. Um, I've just been taking a whole lot more pictures with the with the other camera, but um, you know, there's still cool exciting things going on with the, the iphone front like kind of turned me on to um that app even longer mm-hmm. and i haven't had a um a whole lot of chance to use it yet but i i think it was maybe last week or something i got a, a couple pretty cool shots with it and um you know i, I liked it enough I kind of knew actually ahead of time that I was going to like it enough that I ended up paying for it, you know, cause I wanted uh, the raw output and all that stuff. And um, but in any case, the, the first uh, shot that I took with it, I was like, wow, this is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You know, the, the, the result was just amazing. So I'm, you know, pretty jazzed on that. So I'm looking for opportunities to, to use that. And um, you know, that's, sparking ideas and some creativity, um, which is good. I, I just feel like up until recently, like I just didn't, I didn't have that spark or desire, you know, to shoot a lot. Um, I, I don't know. My, I was occupied with other things this year, uh, mountain biking and <laughs> stuff yeah. like that. And, uh, but, yeah. Well, that, that happens. I mean, you know, th- for, for me personally this year, it's been, uh, my book has been consuming a lot of my time and I just haven't been able to get out and take a lot of pictures like I normally would. 
Um, but now that it's finished, I can, and, and of course now, <laughs> of course we're into winter. Um, th- I mean, there's still lots of things to shoot in the winter time, but, uh, it, um, you, you know, it just takes up so much time. Uh, but I think that's awesome that you're getting back out there and, and, and creating again with the new camera or the new to you camera. And, um, uh, so how, how do you like the camera? Like, is it as awesome as I think it is? Yeah. So, um, for, for anyone that doesn't know, if you're familiar with Mark Sadowski, who, you know, was kind of the main host of tiny shutter and whatnot. Um, he is like a hardcore Fuji user. Um, and I ended up buying this camera off of him and, um, you know, the, the form factor of the camera is real similar to, um, my old Sony camera that I shot with for a long time. Um, but it's, it's even more, how do I phrase it? There's not like a lot of like auto functionality to it. it. It's, it's an involved camera. You know, it's like a lot of dials and manual settings and everything. You really have to like pay attention, um, which I'm, you know, I've always kind of never really shot like fully automatic anyway. I was always adjusting, you know, something on my own, whether that was the the shutter speed or the aperture or whatever. And with this camera, I just, you know, you can do things auto or whatever, but it's not real obvious, like. The, the way the camera's set up, it just doesn't call out like, Hey, here's program mode or auto <laughs> mode or whatever. It just doesn't really, it's not that type of camera, you know? Um, yeah. So the, there was a little bit, of, not really like a learning curve. Cause like, I know how to use it and everything, but just kind of like getting it set up to like my liking. There's like a lot of customization that you can do to it because it's got like all these dials and buttons that are programmable and stuff and it's like okay you know what would i want this button to do you know and getting that all dialed in and um uh but generally uh you know even though this this camera is five years old already um it's a major step up from my sony yeah Uh, how is it at low iso um, or sorry, so, high ISO. I, I knew what you meant. Um, yeah, it's it's you know probably not as good as like the latest and greatest cameras of today, uh, but it's leaps and bounds better than my Sony. So like for instance, um, with the Sony, if I had to shoot above four hundred ISO, I just didn't take the picture because oh really yeah yeah i mean it, it just was horrible it was horrible uh, it was like that with my last can and i had to yeah but th- this one um you know I, I i took a whole bunch of pictures just um a few days ago at like a, a christmas light display thing that we went to and um you know it was shooting 1200 you know 2400 iso no problem i mean i really didn't have to do um, you know, the, like the raw files have, have some noise or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know how Fuji processes JPEGs or whatever. JPEGs are incredible out of this camera. They're absolutely incredible. It's something I've always heard about these Fuji cameras is how good the JPEGs are. And it's no joke. They are yeah. outstanding. Yeah. I've heard Mark talk about that on his, uh, Fuji, the Fuji love podcast. Yeah. And, um, so I've actually gotten into the habit now and I, I'm telling you, I'm going to have a desk full of, uh, <laughs> hard drives in a little bit here, the way I've been shooting. Cause I, now I'm shooting, um, you know, raw plus JPEG. Um, so the, the camera has two card slots and I, you know, have raw written to one JPEG written to other. And of course I shoot fine JPEGs, which are, yeah bigger file um but it's awesome um you know the camera has all these film simulations fuji film simulations and i don't like them all but a handful of them i'm like i've really taken to and i'm noticed i still edit and mostly share the raw files but 
I've taken a lot of pictures lately that I'm just like, yeah, these JPEGs are good enough and I don't need to do a single thing to them. Just out of camera, boom, they look amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That that's awesome. Like, um, yeah, like I've, I've heard, you know, like I say, Mark has mentioned it a few different times and, and the people that he interviews say the same thing. The, the JPEGs out of those cameras are amazing. And if I, if I ever went back to a traditional camera like that, I'm definitely going the Fuji route. Like I was thinking Sony, but then after hearing what Mark says on his show and, and um, you know, seeing what uh, Adam Gibbs and uh, uh, the photo tripper, Gavin Hardcastle are producing with their Fujis yeah. out of this world. Crazy good. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I was fortunate enough that I was able to acquire a couple uh, lenses right off the bat. So um, I had a couple a couple old Nikon lenses sitting around and I got a Fuji to Nikon lens adapter. So like right when I got the camera, I was using these old Nikon lenses on it, which was fun, you know, it was manual focus and everything, but, you know, I was getting some great shots and then, um, kind of just like, I don't know, this just kind of happened. It, I went in this camera shop maybe about a month ago now and they had this brand new, this lens just came out. It's a Tamron 18 to 300 millimeter zoom. Ooh, it's really? The, uh, yeah, it's the first, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's the first 18 to 300. Maybe it's the first for Fuji. It's a first something of that range. So, you know, it's like 16.6 times zoom you know, from, from wow. 18 to 300. <laughs> and, um, it was, it was the top of my list of lenses to buy. And this camera shop, I went in, I'd never been in there before. And I was talking to one of the owners and I was commenting to him, like, oh, I don't really see much Fuji here and here. He goes, Oh yeah. You know, we have it. There's some on the shelf down there, you know, Fuji lenses or whatever. And I was just like, oh, you know, I don't know if I really want any of those. And, he goes, oh, we got that new Tamron. And I was like, wait, like you have it here? He goes, yeah, we have one. And he brought it out. <laughs> and I was like, you just have this one. And he goes, yep. And I said, ah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Damn. Impulse, impulse buy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I got that. And, um, you know, like some of the bird pictures that you've seen me post um, somewhat recently were shot with that, like immediately, like the next day after I got it, I think oh, I yeah. went out and, and did that. And then just, um, a handful of days ago, I got a, uh, a 14 millimeter F 2.8. So like really wide angle, um, it's manual focus, but, um, my intention with that is, uh, Milky way landscape oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, I shot cool. with it a little bit this weekend, like some waterfall nonsense or, you know, the lens is great, but the pictures are not, um, <laughs> they're, it was so overcast is kind of, I don't even know why I went out and shot It's very oh, boring yeah. light, but, um, yeah. So hopefully soon some, uh, you know, starscape type stuff with that lens. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Dave, how about you? Uh, you've been out uh, doing a bit of, running are you, are you actually running yet yeah. or are you still kind of oh yeah jogging with your leg um it's the the it was a it was a uh, santa run 5k race um so it was i'm not back to where i was in terms of running running uh right. so it, it just to recap jog. though just tell, tell everybody what happened to your to your leg sure uh well okay uh kind of going back we have to really go back to believe it or not early August, uh, when I caught COVID off of Ruth, uh, and that took me down for hard for, I mean, hard for running, not in general. I was not close to being hospitalized. It was, uh, felt yeah. like a really bad science infection, but it, it hit me. Um, and I started, it took me around a month to where I was starting to be able to run a little bit, still had some pretty bad, I could feel my chest was not my lungs were still not back to normal. Um, but when that was going on, I rolled and broke my ankle. Mm -hmm. So that took me down for, I was in a walking boot for a month and 
out of walking booth, but out of walking booth, but unable to run for another month. So that took a while. So pretty much since um, August, I was not able to do much running or any exercise, really. Yeah, especially so, the, the weather's good for running then. <laughs> well, you know, on it, I hate to say it this way, but the, the rule of thumb I have for running outdoors is, is it um, icy and slippy? You know, if it isn't and the temperature is, let's say, above 20 degrees, I'm willing to go outside and go running outdoors. So, uh, yeah, this... Um, I think it was like a week and a half ago or so. Uh, there was uh, actually a local run, a lo- local group actually had three or four sand runs in different places around the city. Um, so yeah, I was able to get out and do a little running that way. Um, took a couple photos beforehand of other people who were very dressed up for the run, and it, it's a fun, it's a fun thing, you know. You see people all dressed up in different costumes and. You know, different get-ups. Uh, someone went, went running with their mastiff. If you know oh, really? the size of a, of a <laughs> mastiff dog, and they went running with that, and it was really nice because they were they had a photographer, and you didn't have to pay for it. Unlike some run, running things, um, they had finishing line photos, which nice. is always nice. Yeah, and also that means you know where they are, so you don't get caught half distracted while they're taking a photo of you. You look. I don't want to say ridiculous because I look ridiculous in the get up I had, but looking bad, not on purpose. <laughs> well, it was a Santa run. <laughs> right. Exactly. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Starting to do that. And we actually got a chance and you know what, I'm going to do a quick, let me see if I can do this here. Um, talking about, we were able to go a quick drive around here and there's one person uh, we don't know who they are. They they're they're the next town over. Um, they put out a, a overwhelming amount of lawn ornaments. Um, oh, for decorations. Uh, tech, yes, for decorations. And we were able to get actually a couple of shots um, driving in the car going up to it. Uh, and the crazy thing is, even though it was okay, it was five thirty, which means it was dark, it was pitch yep. black. Yeah, it's um, dark. <laughs> yeah, it didn't do night mode. It was the the lore, the ornaments were light enough. It didn't yep. have to go to night mode for it. So I want to show a couple. Fo- Actually, I'm going to put this over here real quick. Okay, I think it's moved over. Uh, Ruth got a picture, and oh, there we go. Okay, we go to. Oh, hold on, and I just up I, I uploaded it re- recently to the new version of iOS, so I'm still learning all the little fun stuff you can do. So Ruth got, took got a couple pictures, and I got a couple pictures um, from the car. Now we stopped. We weren't, you know, we pulled over side the road and we took pictures that way. So let me do a quick share here. And this is the one Ruth got. Oh yeah, that's kind cool. Of, kind of an up close look there. And yeah, it, that... it, it's one of these big houses with a big front yard. So they got room, but it's it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And you know, not much on the house really, but everything's on the no, lawn. No. Everything's in front, yeah. And let me go let's see. Okay. And let me switch to okay. This yeah, is we've the got, one we've got a handful a of houses like here. that here. Yeah. So this is kind of on this is a little more of a zoomed out look here. So you can see they have a manger scene, they got a couple of angels up here. Uh, a little further down underneath the purple tree, they have a helicopter, <laughs> <laughs> like a blow up helicopter area down there. They have the snowman on the right. I mean, it is it is crazy. All they yeah. do here with all the light stuff. Well, we have a place in town here um, that I swear when they put their lights on in the evening, our lights dim. 
<laughs> it's it's lit up like the Griswolds. And I took a picture of it last year, and I want to get a picture of it again this year. But uh, and, and actually, the city of Owen Sound, where I live, they have a, an Instagram account where uh, I'm trying to think of the hashtag. I think it's hashtag get lit OS. I'm not sure if that's exactly it or not, but they've been putting on uh, like a picture a day um, starting at number one. And maybe it's since December 1st, I don't know what, what it is. I just happened to notice this today, but all these different places around town that have lights on, on their houses. And the very first one, I think was this place I'm thinking of. Um, it, it's kind of a close in shot where you don't really see everything. So I can't, I don't know for sure if it's it or not, but, um, but yeah, it, it was, you know, it, it's interesting. And, and um, uh, so Matt, you said there's places like that there too. Like there's uh, some well-lit homes. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few. I have a, uh, um, a list saved in Google maps and then, you know, we uh, spend a few evenings in December driving around you know, go into these places to check them out or whatever. Some of them are just, you know, kind of similar to what Dave showed where it's just a house with a ton of lights. And some of them have like the whole, uh, you know, you tune your radio to a station and it's synced to music oh, wow. and everything. Oh, neat. Yeah. There's a, a handful oh. of those around. And then I, I just heard about one today um, and I need to add the address to my list later. Um, it's in a, a nearby town that has a roller coaster in the yard. And I, so I don't know what that means exactly, but um, I have to go check it out and see what that's all about. I think it means they've got a lot of creativity, a lot of lights and a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I've seen things where people put up like little roller coasters for their kids that have hills that are like two, like, you know, four feet high and it kind of rolls like that. So yeah, I could see them doing something like that. If you got the room for it. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to be paying their hydro bills. (laughs) Yeah. Ouch. (laughs) Well, that's a look at what we've been up to for uh, the last little while. And like I say, you know, my, my time has been spent with the book, but it's all done now. Um, But I did want to mention that. Quick little announcement here. I'm going to be a grandfather. Yay. And Yay. <laughs> you guys already do that. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, uh, I, I've known about it for a little bit, but couldn't say anything because we, you know, wanted uh, immediate family to get all, all to get the word first and whatnot before it went wide open. So uh, my daughter in law, she um, put it on social media there. Oh, within the last week anyway. And when I saw that, then I knew it was time that I can just blow it up and, and tell, tell as many people as I wanted. So uh, little baby should be um, arriving in May and uh, everybody's pretty excited about it. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So <clears throat> first, first grandchild for me too. So it's, it's really exciting. Um, anyway. So now what we're going to talk about is, uh, um, let me get my back to my notes here. Is uh, an an app that just came back or just came out for the iPhone. Um, there's been a Mac version for years, and it's always been a really good uh, editor. You'd almost think it's part of the operating system, and it's called Pixelmator. And then they come out with Pixelmator Pro with you know a lot more features. Um, there was a Pixelmator app on the iPhone that was very general like it didn't have a lot of functionality at all and um and then they put a, an app on the ipad pixel made her photo and it it was loaded up with some pretty good features and then now they have pixel made her photo on the iphone and the people who developed this app they, they have a way to make it look like it just belongs uh in the operating system um it, it's so well done and uh, so I'm going to connect my phone here and show you what it looks like. And there it is. Okay. You guys could see that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Um, so this is a, a photo I took in the mall today. The, uh, one of the stores was empty, and and so they've decided to decorate it up and and give it a Christmas theme, which is very fitting this time of year. And uh, so now Pixelmator Photo, um, you can see at the top center of the screen there has um, uh, an ML button, like a magic wand, and that's machine learning. And if I was to just tap it, now this photo was taken in Halide, and <coughs> excuse me, it was a raw and a JPEG. And when I tap that, that ML for the machine learning, it's going to do like an auto adjustment. Uh, so it didn't change a whole lot. And I can, uh, I can swipe back and forth and see the original and then the, um, the change that it made. So I'm going to shut that back off again. Uh, so one thing that Pixelmator Photo has is film simulations. So there's like classic film, I think it is, um, like modern day film. There's I, I went to the Pixelmator website and read up on it, and I'll put a link in the show notes mm. to to the website where it describes what these film simulations are. But they're you know like black and white, some for landscape. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. So if I go into the edit setting or the editing functions, which is the three lines on the top with the buttons on them. We get into, uh, you know, there's white balance, lightness, hue and saturation, selective color, color balance, levels, curves, replace color, vignette, sharpen, and grain. And then there's other ones too. If I hit the little three dots there, um, you know, go to customize adjustments, there's a list of all the ones that are available. You know, you have yeah. fade, black and white, color, monochrome, uh, sepia, channel mixer, invert. And I just don't have them turned on. Maybe I'll turn them all on. Unless I have to do them all one at a time. Yeah, I'm not going to turn them all on. It takes too long. But anyway, um, so if you're listening to the audio, check out the YouTube channel. That's where you're going to see this in, in action here. Um, so I go to, uh, let's see here. There is a spot for the, there's the, uh, film sims down at the bottom here now. So you've got, I think it's a, like regular black and white. Yeah. Cinematic is what that cinematic. Is. Yes. Thank you. Sure. So let's, let's hit one of these and see what happens. Yeah, so it it kind of fades it out a little bit, puts a vignette around it, kind of gives it a cinematic look to it. Um, um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think that I I haven't had an opportunity to really play with this app yet because um, I didn't even know it existed until right before the show. <laughs> but uh, I think that you could apply these. Um, presets or film simulations whatever you want to call them um but go in and still tweak some of the parameters so like yeah um you know it, the cool thing about that is not only can you really make it your own then but you can also see what it did you know so if you're kind of just mm -hmm. starting out and like learning how to edit your pictures and um you, you want to know like how did it achieve that look you could go in and see you know, all the sliders that it moved and how it moved them or whatever to achieve that look, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So what you do is you swipe up on the film sims there, and then you can see where these sliders are now. I just picked one of the vintage um, film sim settings or uh, simulations, and you can see now that the exposure didn't change, but the highlights have been brought down, the shadows have been brought up, brightness is brought down a bit, you know, contrast, black, point um there's been some adjustments to the hue and saturation even to um uh, sp specific colors like selective color mm -hmm. uh like the reds have been slightly adjusted and even the like the oranges and the yellows all these have been slightly adjusted with that film sim uh that's given it the the look that it has now and uh 
Doesn't look like the levels changed. There's a there's even been a slight curve adjustment done to it. All this is done with the tap of a button. But you know, like Matt said, you can go in and you can further adjust these. Like if I wanted to um, say brighten up the highlights a bit more, you know, you could do that. Uh, so yeah, it, it's really good. It, it's it, it's it, and it looks like it's designed to fit the operating system, like to fit iOS. Um, now, one thing that I found in this Pixelmator photo that I thought was really cool is if you hit the the three dots in the top right, this is where you've got some of your options like share, export, you, know, you can enter full screen, copy the adjustments and all that stuff <clears throat> is super resolution. So if you tap super resolution, what it's doing is it's, doubling the resolution of the photo. So it's taken it from a 12 megapixel photo to a 24 megapixel photo. And when it's done, I'm gonna save it out. Okay, so now it's done. Now I'm gonna export it. And I'll just export it as a JPEG uh, at 100% quality. Save image. There, and now I'll go back to the Photos app. And which one did I do? Okay, I did that one. Okay, so this is the original. If I double tap on this, that takes it to basically 100%, I think it is, um, like 100% zoom. Now, if I go in to the one that I just exported, double tap it, Well, theoretically, it's twice the resolution. So if I did this, and there you can see it is uh, twice the resolution as far as the camera specs go, 27 megapixels. And it says, uh, you know, iOS 15 tells you where you saved the uh, images from. It's saved from photo. Uh, if I go to the original one where it was saved from Halide, you can see that it's a, a 12 megapixel um, photo at the regular native resolution. So how this is going to apply in the real world, I don't know, because I don't know how good a quality you're going to get with that, just looking at it on a phone screen. Um, I'd almost want to print something just to see, you know, if it's going to be any benefit or not but I thought that was interesting. Yeah. I'm super curious about this. Um, you know, now you got me thinking like, uh, um, you know, like I took a picture with um, even longer, right. I mentioned that earlier in the show and I really like the picture. I could just open it in here, really not even make any edits to it, but hit that super resolution button and export it and yeah. have, a bigger so I think I'm gonna do that and I I'm gonna get um maybe one of each printed and see I don't know I have to think about this I'm gonna see how big I can print them yeah because I think uh you know looking at okay so this is the original and then looking at the uh the one where I doubled the resolution Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'm okay. not in there. You to, yeah, I will get exported each, first. Yeah. I'll get each one printed at 100%. And then what I'll do is I will print the original at the same size as the super resolution and see what that looks like. It'll look like hot garbage is what it'll look like, but uh, <laughs> it'll be fun to it'll be fun yeah, to yeah. comparison. Yeah, it's hard to say how it's going to turn out, but um, you know, I did this. What I did this resolution thing with a, a different photo. Um, it was a, a scene of a like a bay with um, <clears throat> in the distance there was a a pier that came out with a um, oh one of those red and white things with a little light on top so that the boats don't hit it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was at just at the end of this pier, and when I toggled between the two photos the one that 
that I use the super resolution on, you can actually see that it looks sharper and crisper. Oh, wow. Now that's on the iPhone screen. So, I mean, I don't know, like I say, I don't know how that's going to um, translate over to prints and stuff like that. So um, eventually one of these days I will do the same thing. I will print one of each and see how it goes. But um, so that's, I mean, that's Pixelmator photo. Uh, something else that, that's interesting here is, uh, let me go to, well, I mean, I'm still in this one here. Let, let's uh, let's try the Band-Aid feature where uh, I, I believe all you got to do is um, swipe over something and, and you can remove it. So there's a, a square. Well, okay, let's let's do this. There's a wreath on the wall at the back of the image above a, you know, fake fireplace between these two Christmas trees. So I'm just going to swipe over this wreath. And I'm looking at my computer screen while I do it. So that's why I'm going out of the lines, <laughs> but it's going to repair. I know it made a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I, say, I, I, I tried that. I tried that with something and it, I still like touch retouch better. Especially the new version. Yeah, we should have talked yeah. about that tonight, but we'll talk about that on the next show. Yeah, yeah, because that because I had the exact same thing where I was trying to get rid of something, but it wasn't all the examples. Which I understand you want to show the best case for your for your product. All the examples yeah. were things that were like, "Hey, here's a clear background, and we're getting rid of it." Instead of like, you're trying to have that meld into a very complicated background with shading and, you know, and it's going to be tough to make that look like it, nothing ever belonged there. Yeah. Yeah. So I just uh, stopped sharing my screen there because uh, I mean, that's kind of a gist of what, what the app does and what it's capable of. Um, uh, like I say, it's, it's, I've only had it for a few days myself and uh, haven't really, tried too many different edits on it, but um, I don't know. I kind of like it. But let me show you one that I did real quick here while we're on the phone. I mean, while, while, while you were talking, still paying attention, but <laughs> um, okay. So there, this is actually, uh, I took this picture uh, earlier in the month in my backyard and I did the super resolution and did some work with the curves and was able to get that out of it. Cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's really hard because if you're trying to get as many stars as you can get, it's going to be, a, at least in my mind, it's going to be a little grainy, especially if you have a lot of light pollution or noise pollution. <laughs> um, but the fact that, you know, like, especially like, and you probably can't see my pointer, but, uh, towards yep. the right around two thirds down, you can kind of see like some of the stars where when the light pollution's there, it's kind of hard to tell them apart, but you can actually see the individual stars there and yeah. it doesn't completely make the tree go away. But you and know that's what? just kind of the, like, that's, that's one of the better yeah. edits of the star shots that I've seen from you yet. Yeah. Thanks. You know, with all that light pollution in there, it looks like yeah. you're out in the middle of nowhere. And, you yeah. know, remember some of them other ones, Dave, where you had that glow around the tree? <sighs> yeah. You don't have that yeah. here. And and no. that's that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Now, admittedly, some of the time, now, I was a little lucky here because I have a neighbor just on the other side of the tree. And I believe, if I remember correctly, they did not have their lights on at the time. Mm -hmm. But earlier in other shots they did have their porch light on and since of course there's no leaves the porch light lights up everything <laughs> oh yeah yeah especially with the 30 second but also because something matt mentioned that i did not realize and i've been using this for a little bit um this thing does um raw yeah i did not realize this did raw and that was a raw shot oh yeah yeah so it, and, and when I exported it, I exported it in uh, the um, high efficiency format. Mm -hmm. So even though it was originally raw, export in a high efficiency Mac, it only came out to four megabytes. Oh, yeah. 
So, and I don't know what it'll look like if I try to, you know, print it out on a glossy paper or, you know, go to a kiosk and print it out. That's the next step to try. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good one to try too, because then you'll see, yeah. you know, yeah. how clear you got the stars and, and whatnot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but like I said, I like, I like Matt said, I like the fact it's, I purchase ones. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't know how they're going to make money down the road. Hopefully they do. You know, once you get people with the initial sign up, you got to keep having people pay. Because once yeah, you hit that, yeah. once you once you hit that limit of everyone who's interested purchased it, then all of a sudden you got to, you know, keep having not necessarily growing, but at least having money come in. Yeah, like a revenue stream. Yeah. yeah. Um, exactly exactly well you know uh they've probably made a good chunk of change off their desktop versions uh i know pixel made a pro is like i don't know 40 50 60 dollars uh, um and it, they must do well with it you know to, to keep things going so oh yeah uh that's always a good sign and the nice thing about pixel made a photo on the iphone right now is it's half price for how long i don't know but um, so it only cost me like four or five dollars, and yeah, it was uh, like three ninety nine, I think. Yeah, if you had to do it, and it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Okay. No, actually, yeah, yeah. it's half price. I, I just checked out Pixelmator Pro on the on the Mac. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's half off. Normally, it's forty dollars US. Right now, okay. it's for twenty, and they looks like they've updated for the M one. Yeah. Yeah. For the Mac, so if you have an M one Mac, definitely, you know. And like I said, I, the thing is, this is where if you're not, I don't want to say stuck, but deeply ingrained in the Adobe um, ecosystem, and you're mm -hmm. looking just for, you know, not the whole suite that kind of overwhelms everything that you have to have a subscription for, but you're only looking for photo editing. It's a good, it's a good option there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Matt, did you get a chance to say what your one fault was with, with it? <laughs> um, no, not yet. Uh, th this app looks amazing, by the way. Uh, I, I'm really excited. I didn't know it existed until literally right before the show, and I de already have it downloaded and <laughs> queued, queued up to use. Um, and, and I, you know, I think I said this already. I like pretty much everything that it could do all the features look like exactly what i would want except for one thing that it doesn't have and that is um extension integration into the photos app um it's it's the reason why i've stuck with polar for as long as i have it's that i just prefer to go in the photos app and look through my photos hit that edit button, hit the three dots, scroll to Polar, boom, Polar opens up and I'm editing. Um, it's, it's just a, to me, a very, it's a less clunky way to, you know, pick out a photo to edit. Um, and this doesn't have that. However, however, I'm going to give this app kind of the benefit of the doubt here because, um, you know, it does tout having, uh, deep integration with photos. And from what I could see on their website, it looks like um, it has a really nice like photo picker uh, or, you know, it, it, it kind of shows you your photos the way that you would see them in the photos app. It looks like. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and that's like, that's what I need. Right. Because it's not, I don't just take like, one shot of something i take like five shots of something right and i need to figure out like which one's the best one and so many photo apps it, uh, there's just something about the photo picker it's really hard to tell if you're trying to just look at your pictures in that and it doesn't like show them the same way that i would see them in the photos app so even if i go in the photos app and i'm like okay it's it's that one it's the third picture from the end but then I go into the app and I look and they're kind of like arranged differently. And I'm like, oh, crap, is it this one or is it this one? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. you know? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So the way this is set up, it 
it looks real nice. So I'm excited to kind of dive in and, and check it out. I have a feeling, a strong feeling that this is going to have a new place, a primary spot, we'll say on my phone. It looks very nice. And yeah. I just want to quickly clarify the, uh, the price um, just because Dave, I'm not picking on you. I just feel like just in case anyone was confused about how expensive oh, no. No. this, this app is. Cause uh, right. um, Greg, you mentioned, you know, you pay in four or five bucks for the app. And then Dave, I know you specifically were talking about the Mac app, but just in case people right. didn't catch that. Um, so mostly what we're talking about here is Pixelmator photo 2.0 for your phone or your iPad. And if you're in the the uh, fabulous United States right now, it is three ninety nine, which is fifty percent off its usual price of seven ninety nine. So get it while it's hot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, now, just just to clarify one point here uh, that people may be questioning in the back of their mind, and that is this photo picker that you mentioned. <clears throat> the photo picker, like. Okay, so with all the the privacy and the security and stuff like that that Apple's coming out with, um, a lot of editing apps, like even even like Facebook, Instagram, you have the choice of disallowing them to to see all your photos, uh, and then you can just add selective photos for them to see and then import into the app. Right? Um, some of the photo editors do that. Now, some of them don't. But the reason is, and, and Pixelmator Photo is one of them here, <clears throat> and that is they're using a function uh, of, of iOS called Photo Picker. And that means it's not that they've got free access to all your photos. That's not what's happening. Not like um, you would think, because just because you don't, it, it, it didn't present you with the little pop-up that says, would you like to allow access to your photos? And then you have three choices, allow, uh, select photos, or do not allow. Uh, that comes up when when you open something like Facebook or, or Instagram when, you first, when this thing first came out. Um, but what it's doing is it's using a photo picker, which means it just shows the photos. The app itself has no clue what it's looking at until you actually select a photo and import it into the app. It doesn't see your photos. It doesn't, you know, scan through them like Facebook and, and Instagram would do if you allowed all access. Um, it, it's it's just a photo picker. Um, you just pick the photo and and import it into the app. So I just wanted to kind of clear that point up with people that are wondering, like you know, they open up Pixelmator Photo and where's this uh, um, this pop up that asks for permission to view our photos. Well, they don't need it because they don't want it. They're not looking at them. They're not doing anything with them until you import the photo through the photo picker. It's, it's a feature of iOS um, that developers have the option of using and whether they use it or not. So anyway, just wanted to kind of clarify that little bit there for the folks who are wondering about the privacy and, and security end of it all. Um, I, I don't want to drag this out, but now you got me curious. Um, have you clicked that? button on any apps to only allow access to certain pictures every time oh really yeah i um so i generally allow access to all pictures um and i accidentally clicked on you know allow access to only the pictures i tell you in the mextures app recently yeah i guess i haven't used that app in a while or something and it asked, and I I clicked that, and oh my gosh, that was a frustrating experience. Like I I was ripping my hair out trying to figure out how to switch it back so that it would just be all the pictures, <laughs> which I eventually yeah. did, but I don't remember how. Um, yeah, it, it it is frustrating, and I do it especially with with Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and you know any of these big social media companies that make their money off your, your information or whatever. Right. Um, it, it, it's a pain, but it's, it's once, once you get used to doing it, it's not that bad. Like if I want to post a photo to, to, uh, Facebook, um, 
I'll hit the photo icon and then it'll say uh, manage. Uh, uh, it'll, it'll select photos that have already allowed or it says manage. So you hit tap manage and then you go. And I, I don't use Facebook on my computer. I haven't since I bought this thing and I won't. Um, so everything I do with Facebook is on the phone. You know but anyway, um, eh? you don't want to taint your computer. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't want Facebook's claws into it. Um, so in the uh, Facebook app on the iPhone, there's a thing that says manage. So you hit that. And what it does is it takes you over to the settings app in Facebook and then where you can select photos and you can view the ones that you've already got selected. And then you can deselect them if you want to stop giving Facebook access to them. And then you can just go through and select the ones you want. And, and then, uh, that's fine. They're done. They're selected. Then you go back to Facebook and now those pictures show up where you can actually select them to put into the post. Sounds convoluted, sounds stupid long of a process to do, but <clears throat> it's, it's better for, as far as I'm concerned, it's more secure. It's more private uh, because if you allow all access to your photos, like say for Instagram, Instagram is scouring your photos for facial recognition, anything that they can get, they're scouring your photos to get them. And I will not allow that. Uh, and I, I've, I've turned, I've, I've made it so that no matter what app I use, if they're wanting to look at my photos, I use um, select, you know, only selected photos. Uh, and then once, once they're done, I'll probably go back in and deselect them so that, you know, they don't have access to them anymore. Once it's posted, that's it. That's all they get. Yeah. Um, I, so just to be clear, I understand the benefits of the the feature and everything mm -hmm. and why you would want that, you know, for privacy and whatnot. But it, in in my case, for like the Mextures app, it, it was not a benefit at all. <laughs> I found it really <laughs> frustrating. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a frustrating thing. But like I say, once you get used to doing it, um, like I say, I've got it for everything now. And it it's just part of the process for me. But um, you know, one thing to do is to go to the Mextures uh, app store entry and look at their privacy thing, uh, read about their, their privacy and see what it is they do with the information. If they do anything, if they don't do anything, if they, if, if, if their thing in, in the app store says they don't collect any information at all, then you could probably open it up to let them have full access to your photos. Cause you know, I mean, hopefully they're, being truth, truthful and honest about these these uh, privacy badges, and if they're not doing anything, then I, I, I probably don't see no big deal. But and now um, you got me curious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is becoming a security show. <laughs> uh, anyway, so <clears throat> so that's Pixelmator Photo, and. Uh, uh, it is pretty cool. It's half price right now. If you're looking for a good photo editor, that's a little more powerful than the Photos app itself. And if, if that's what the one you're using, if you want a little more versatility, check out Pixelmator Photo. It's pretty good. So now we're going to talk about, uh, I guess probably I'll be talking about it because this is so new. Um, it, it's a website that looks like an app, but it's just a website and it's called Looped. L-O-O-P-E-D, uh, and the website is looped.to, and it is, um, so a couple of guys put out this photo sharing app called Gala, and I've got it, uh, I've used it, um, it's coming along, it, they're continually working on it, getting a little better, and it's, you know, their shot at taking on Instagram. And I mean, will anybody ever be able to do that? I don't know. You know, you know Instagram is just so big and, and believe it or not, Instagram's finally supposedly bringing back chronological feed, but whether they've actually done it or not, I don't know. But anyway, um, so Gala is a, an, another photo app out there that that's, you know, take a look at it if you want. Um, but th these guys have put out a thing on the web. It's, it's strictly in, in, in a browser. And it's called Looped. And what it is, is, uh, excuse me, I am going to um, open it up in my browser and then I'll let you have a look at it. It's, uh, 
kind of like a digital um uh, a digital business card i guess for lack of better terms um and here it is okay so it it's basically just a, a place on the web where you can um leave links to your you know your social media uh things like that uh, kind of like linktree or about.me you know those are other sites that um where you can put everything in one place for people to find all your online presence presences or whatever presence and uh, you know like uh instagram twitter youtube i've got i've got my website and i've got the website for this podcast and you so I've got the pro version of this and with the pro version, I think you can put a, like a video up here where um, if I click on it, I haven't done this on anything but my phone. So I don't know. It's not working, but anyway, you could, you have a video to showcase what you, what it is that you do. And of course, mine's all a bunch of macro stuff here. Um, so under links, I've got my, my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube channel for the podcast, my own website, shot on, shot on iPhone only.com. And then the podcast website, uh, iPhoneography.ca. And so if I clicked on the podcast one and there it takes you to the website, if you haven't been, go have a look. <laughs> so go back to it here. Uh, under media, you can add photos. Um, you know, you, you can add a, a bunch of photos here, just like you can on Instagram, Flickr, any of these photo sharing sites. And then when you click on the photo, it takes it full size. And then about me, uh, oh, I'll have to change the color of that font. But all I put here is hit the My Website button on the Links tab to read about me. So if we go back to the Links tab, <clears throat> and hit my website, it takes you to my personal website or one of them and has a big spiel about me, which uh, I'm not going to read now because it would put everybody to sleep. But anyway, um, so I think this is kind of cool. I think it looks better on the phone because on the phone, it looks more like an app. And, um, you know, it's a little customizable. Uh, I'm not, I, I, I honestly don't recall what, you get with the pro version versus the free version, but you can get it for free. And it's at looped.to. I'll put a link in the show notes. And, uh, you know, if somebody uh, wants to know what you do, what you do on the web, where you put your pictures, all that stuff, you can easily put them down in these buttons here and share away. Um, like I say, it's kind of like Linktree. Uh, I have a Linktree thing, but I never use it. Um, just, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it's a free service or you have to pay for it. I think you probably have to pay for some of it, but, um, but the free version of this would probably be enough for just about anybody. And, uh, you know, you put your name, a quick little bio on there and uh, send people to this and, and they can find everything else from there. Um, it's probably not going to be for everybody, but uh, you know, it's these guys approached me and, 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 sent me a message and asked if I'd be interested in trying it out. <clears throat> and I said, yeah, yeah, I'll give it a whirl. And, uh, you know, it is, it, it, like I say, it looks better on the phone than it does um, on, on a, a, a web browser on a computer. So um, yeah, you know, give it a look, see what you think. <laughs> earlier this evening, I gave you a really hard time about this because I just, <laughs> I, I can't wrap my head around like, the purpose of it right? And, right and and my whole thinking was like you know it like like greg like you have a website right so like i i was it just wrapped up in this thing where like why would you tell somebody like to go to this looped thing when you could direct them to your website and your website probably has links to instagram and youtube and you know, all the other places that you are, like, I don't get it. And even if you didn't have a website, right. If you have whatever Instagram or Flickr or whatever, most social sites have a place where you could put 
links to other social sites, Twitter and, you know, all that jazz. Right. So I was like, I don't get it. I cannot wrap my head around (laughs) the purpose of this. Right. But, but I think I just thought of a great way to utilize this. And that is in your email signature. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's the simplest link. It's the shortest little link, right? Like tiny little link and throw that in an email signature and someone clicks on it and then they could choose, you know, any of the different ways that you put in there to learn more about you or get a hold of you or whatever it is that they want to do. Now I'm thinking I might be on board with this. <laughs> I gave you such a hard time earlier tonight. Yes, I'm so you did. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, but that's a great idea. Put it in, in an email signature. Uh, see, I never thought of that, but but that is a perfect uh, use case for it. Uh, you know, about yeah, me I, does the same thing. I, I think <clears throat> I'm going to do that. I think you know, just in my personal email, you know, and um, yeah, I when I shoot off emails, if people want to kind of see, because I don't know, like in an email signature, that's just like, I'm sending it to whoever and whatever it's who knows what the email is about. Right. It's not even necessarily about photography. It'd be weird to just like have a link to like my website right in there, but there's something different about this looped thing. Right. Cause it could go to my Twitter. It could, they could click whatever they could click whatever and, they, and you can add your website into it. You could add your website. Yeah. To I the, know. The I know. Yeah. Page. So I can yeah. have every, every, every little thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dang. <laughs> right, I owe you an apology, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> You're not old enough to be a curmudgeon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think my exact words were old fuddy duddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, no, that that's good. It's good that uh, you know you found something that that, that you could use it for, and uh, you know these these guys are are you know a couple of great guys who are just trying to um, find their way to make something meaningful for people. And they didn't tell me this. This is just the impression I'm getting, and and um, you know that they're they're working hard on on Gala as a photo sharing app, and uh, you know. I'll, I'll probably showcase that at some point in the future too. But, uh, but this thing, I, I don't know how new it is. I mean, they just approached me about it today. So um, I, I think it's really, really new. I don't, I don't know if there's that many people on it, but, um, but yeah, it's, it, I think it's a good idea and, um, it, and it looks good. It looks good on the phone. Uh, looks better on the phone than it does on, on the computer. And I mean, you could even make a QR code, uh, to put somewhere and people can scan the QR code and take you right to their loop page. Um, that's probably what I'll do. And, and, you know, that, that could be your part of your email signature. Um, you know, find me online, scan the code or whatever, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think, I think there's plenty of potential here for, for looped. So anyway, yeah, so that's, so that's looped. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to touch on real quick here, was uh, and I just found this like a couple of hours before we come on here tonight. Um, it, it is a couple of iPhone rumors, and if these things come true, this has got me excited. <clears throat> I'm not big on rumors, and I'm not going to hold any water to these at all. But if they're true, things are looking good for iPhone photography. The first one is for next year's phone. Um, and this is according to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. He believes that the iPhone 14 is going to go to a 48 megapixel sensor. It's about freaking time. I mean, the, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra has 108 megapixel photo. It does pixel binning, all that stuff. Um, it's a, it would be about time. The iPhone finally goes something larger than uh, 12 megapixels. I mean, it, they were stuck on eight megapixels for so long, and then they finally went to twelve. And it's been, gosh, since uh, what the six S that they went to the twelve megapixel, and then I think it was the six S. And then for how many years is that? Doesn't matter. It's been too many years to finally go to a, 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 a forty-eight megapixel camera, and I'm sure it's probably just going to be the wide. Um, but that'll be 
really, really cool. And the other thing is, I'll mention this real quick, and then we can discuss it a bit, is uh, it, for the 2023 K, uh, iPhone, um, they're looking at going to a Periscope camera system. What exactly that means, I'm not sure, but I had I have a feeling it has something to do with the zoom, and it is. And you'll yeah, you'll get so much better range with it. So, Dave, yeah, what do you think? Basically, all that? Uh, well, the 48 is definitely pixel binning, and I would be shocked if it's if it does come. I'd be shocked if it's anything but the regular wide. Uh, just again, the big difference between Apple. And, and for those of us who used Apple more than, let's say, ooh, 10 years in the past, to say Apple is your volume brand is still kind of weird. But especially when it comes to iPhone, Apple is your volume brand. You know, let's say it's only in the 14 Pro, let's say non Max or non Max, assuming they have both sizes next year. Um, but it's only going to be the Pro. Apple will go to Sony. Or, you know, all the other distributors and manufacturers say, by the way, we need 300 million of these over the next year. Can you give us to us? And most companies can say, will probably say, no, <laughs> we can't get close to that kind of output you need. Because that's what Apple needs these days. I think that's one of the reasons why it's delayed so much. Um, my guess is, and this is sheer guess without reading anything at all, but knowing how Apple how Apple operates, it will be 48 megapixel, but they will be 12 megapixel photos. Because oh, of the you, pixel you think so? Because of, yeah, because of the pixel binning. So, it, because there's only, remember, if you cut each pixel into four pieces, unless you're making yeah. a massively used camera, each pixel and sub pixel is going to be teeny tiny. So, you got some major light sensing issues going on there. So, well, like I said, though, if you look at the Samsung, though, they have four cameras on the back. So they can afford to throw one specialty, you know, 108 megapixel. Apple doesn't have that. Apple will only have the three. And we all know that Apple tends to think about the three cameras as a whole camera system, not I have this lens, this lens, this lens. You know, it's like we're going to use a little, we're going to use this, we're going to use this information from this one, we're going to use this from this one, we're going to move. So I can see them saying, well, it's for, it's 48 megapixel equivalent, but your photo output will be 12. And you may have to use like a third party. It's just like, you know, uh, if you want to shoot raw, you can't do that in the built-in camera app. You're going to have to, use, you have to download something else. I can see if you want to do a true 48 megapixel, a non-binned one, you're going to have to use like Halide or Camera Plus 2 or, you know, some kind of uh, advanced camera feature because that won't be built in. Yeah. Uh, the Periscope, if for me, if you want to make a Periscope camera, um, basically the idea is you think back to, and, and this is major oversimplification, think back if you ever saw a Periscope, the, like the... Um, the milk carton pillar periscope you see kids make in elementary school, you know, mm -hmm. same idea here. You have your lens here, you have a camera here, and then you have going down. So basically you're, if you, the way you make the lenses, you're basically making it where you're having a massive lens instead of sticking out that way, which is, you know, impossible. You're having it inside. So you're having basically, that's how you can get a 10 X, a 30x optical zoom. You're using that that way to get the actual physical distance you need. Um, but to do that, I'm I'm thinking you're going to have to have a major change in the body of the camera and of the phone. You can't simply say we're going to move things around in here and have all this extra room for the uh, periscope zoom because they don't there's no extra room in here yeah yeah <laughs> so you're, they, you're looking at a bigger camera bump around. probably or, a bigger camera bump well or you're maybe changing the way the internals with the camera are set up you know because yeah. by then they could be have making their own modem instead of using mm -hmm. a qualcomm modem which will probably be added onto the system on a chip 
uh, just like with the M1, you know, instead of having five chips do something, it's all in a system on a chip. You're bringing more in on the system on the chip. Also, I know I saw rumors saying that the front facing camera could be a hole punch instead of the um, yeah, yeah, notch there. But I could see that, let's say the 2023 iPhone, call it whatever you want. I, you know, who knows, but it's going to be one. Yes, we have this amazing new periscope system and to make it and to make more we have decided to get rid of the charging port <laughs> yeah so I, it's I wireless charging only wireless <laughs> you know what though it, it, they're if they're going to do it they're going to do it on a brand new design but it'll only be a pro again this will not be everything it'll be you know yeah. just like when just like when the 10 came out you had you know the eight which was really your next gen, your just your next step in your iPhone from the sevens. And then you had your 10, which was, oh, if you really want to try something different, OLED screens and all. Yeah, that, that was the retooling. Way out here. Yeah. Yeah, that's your brand yeah. new. So I could see that being, hey, we have your iPhone 15s, which are going to be a step up from the 14s, which are going to be a step up from this. So they're going to have two, three years where I don't think you're going to see a lot of changes. Maybe the hole punch there instead of the notch, but I yeah. don't see a lot, a lot of changes. But let's say in 2023, as a super pro or whatever, you know, additional, you know, adjectives they want to throw on top of it and, you know, little bits at the end of the naming, it's going to be a complete, you know, we decide to make it the most waterproof dust proof secure yeah. iphone ever so we're getting rid of the charging port. we're getting rid of the lightning part and it's all going to be wireless from then on out because they'll have four or five years of you know wireless capabilities in the iphone so i could see them saying hey we're not going to make all of our iphones it's like they didn't make them all face id they had yeah. an off they had two different <clears> there'll be that crossover for, phase right? yeah exactly so it's going so i could see because they got rid of the charging port and some other things, they're able to free up extra space, even though other phone companies can do it now, that it's going to be a periscope. Yeah. Because you do need a little extra room in there. So, yeah, I can see that as being like the next. I, to me, the 10 was a generational leap in design. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, full screen. Because and it was like, yeah, full screen. Uh, notch, no more thumbprint, you know, because this, I mean, I, I, very Leo, I went from a 10 to this and obviously it's heavy, it's large. Um, but in terms of, yeah, I pick it up and I put it side to side. It's still similar, you know, yeah, yeah the, it, it, it's, it's squared instead of rounded on the outside. Um, that yeah. made a little bit of a difference in the, you know, the mag safe on the back, which I haven't used yet because I haven't purchased. And the, the lens is being freaking massive compared to the tens lenses. But yeah, it's basically it looks like the same thing. So I can see 2023 being the next. This is what the next five years of iPhone look like. Yeah. And yeah, it's like Periscope, the, no the ports. 10s Max and the and the yeah. 12 Pro Max. Where it's yeah, you know, Minor, a, a retooling, is exactly. completely but not retooled a complete and redesigned. Rethought. Yeah, but not a complete what, rethought. <coughs> right. What do you think, Matt? Are you excited for a larger sensor like that? If it was to happen, uh, no, not not using a pixel bidding technique. I'd be excited for a larger sensor that stayed at twelve megapixels. Oh, so just bigger pixels. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, <laughs> I've heard of pixel bidding and I'm sure I've heard it explained, but I was like, ah, I don't really remember what that is. So I'm like quickly trying to read up on it and I just can't wrap my head around like exactly what the benefit is, you know, like to me. Better zoom, I think is all it really comes down to. I, I mean, really when, no, when you look at the really. S21 ultra, it's got that, 108 megapixel sensor and the zoom capabilities 
far exceeds the iPhone, what the iPhone can do right now. And that's the only thing that does it is the fact that it's got that larger sensor, more pixels, um, and the, the pixel binning. It's, I think that's really, to me, that's, I mean, to get a shot of the moon with an S21 Ultra, I've, I've seen some pretty amazing pictures taken like that. And other than that, I really don't see the, the, the benefit of that big of a sensor. Um, I mean, if they could take a native photo at 108 megapixels, that would be cool. But um, yeah, so I mean, that that to me would be the only benefit of it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, <laughs> you know, like like Dave said <clears throat> earlier, you know, you're you're basically you're basically dividing this by four. So you're yeah. still getting 12 megapixel output essentially out of it. So I would rather just have bigger pixels than four tiny little pixels kind of, you know, gathering light, you know, to make one equivalent larger pixel. Yeah. And you know what? Me. At the end of the day, it's a phone, right? You use you're taking pictures with a phone. If you want massively sized sensors, go get yourself a full frame or or like a mirrorless or whatever. Those are the cameras that are gonna house these big pixels. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, when it comes to using a phone for mobile photography, I mean, I've accepted the fact that I'm limited with the size of the sensor. And the bigger pixels that came in with the uh, with the 12 Pro Max, they do do a great job. Uh, I think that's where I think that's where the technology should go. And of course, these are rumors. Who knows? Like Ming Chi Kuo has not always been right. So <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see what does happen. Uh, I, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Like I say, I'm not real big on these rumor things, uh, especially when they're this far out. But mind you. It's not going to be long now where they're going to have to start producing the next for, next iPhone. Like I'm, I'm saying, I'm thinking within four or five months away, they're going to have the finished product sitting on the table at Apple. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh, uh, real quick, Matt, Periscope Zoom. What do you think of that? Do you think it would be? I actually think that that's more likely to happen than the 48 megapixel uh, sensor. Um, yeah, but. Uh, yeah, I think it'll it'll take some, you know, if Apple wants to keep the form factor of the these phones similar to what it is now, it's definitely going to uh they're going to have to do some creative Tetris inside that phone to fit everything in. Um but you know, you know how I roll, man, the bigger the better. So if they want to <laughs> make the phone bigger, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I guess what what I'm saying is you need to make the phone physically larger to put a periscope camera lens in it. Then hopefully that means you're making the screen bigger as well. Yeah. So I'm all for it. I'm all for yeah. it. <laughs> and and um, re real, real super quick. Um, I'm going to find the article and share it with you and maybe like after the new year, I could come back on and we could talk about this sensor thing again, but mm -hmm. um, Sony developed a, a new sensor technology and, and I'd have to find the article and reread it again, but it has massive implications for improving a uh, small sensor performance. So like, you know, phones essentially, um, you know, obviously this is, probably still years down the road, but I'll share it with you and we can talk about it after the new year because it's going to be way better than this pixel binning nonsense. Yeah. Cause these things are using Sony sensors. Sure. Yeah. As right? are you know, most, <clears throat> you know, most things out there are using Sony sensors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's interesting. I never heard anything about that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Um, well, I think we'll call it a show, guys. Uh, uh, it's been a great discussion. It's been great having you on, Matt. Uh, I see yeah, you got your you. Christmas tree all lit up in the background there. So five yeah, more it's days. A, it's in a different spot this year. It's usually 
back there, but now I have a, a piano. So yeah, yeah, it's that's hard neat. to move the piano out of the way. So now it's uh, in the other corner here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it looks good. Um, <clears throat> so, well, uh, just real quick, tell everybody where they can find you. Plug your website. Oh, yeah. You could check me out at, um, I think it's uh, mhoffmanphoto.pickfair.com. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just say it's that. If it's not right, I'll make sure it's right on the screen. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, you know, check me out on Instagram too. I'm at M Hoffman photo. Right on Dave. Where say you, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as prof pod and uh, Matt. (coughs) Sorry, took on my throat. It is M Hoffman photo at pick P I C F A I R.com. I just double checked. Cool. I got it right. So it is definitely <laughs> there. Yeah. Well, it, and also it not only the M Hoffman photo, but I didn't know if it was PIC T P I C, you know, with, with how everyone spells things. That's why Nobody I've knows. always felt lucky that I um, start early on stuff and I'm able to get prof pod in most places. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Makes exactly. it easy to spell. Yeah. Also people don't have to say, so how do you spell your last name again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so um yeah and uh, you can find me on uh on loot.to uh i don't know the full url offhand it's loot.to slash question mark equals greg i think but i'm <laughs> gonna make a short url for that uh like a bitly link or something like that and uh, i'll probably use that so but anyway uh but yeah, other than, other than that, you can find me on the other all-in-one uh, link pointer. Uh, you can go to about.me slash McMillan, and you can find all my stuff that way too. Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. And, um, you know, we do the show every two weeks, uh, you know, as long as we can. And uh, you can, the podcast lives on iPhoneography.ca and... Uh, Let's see, uh, you could try the look, checking out the uh, online community that this thing holds all started from at artfulipc.club. And um, oh, I wanted to plug real quick <clears throat> that uh, Shane Mostyn had a live show on Friday, f- Friday in North America. It was Saturday morning for him over in Australia. And um, it was uh, so it was Shane as the host, and then it was uh, Mike James. Um, Ralph Mayhew. So those, both those guys are Aussies and then David Addison and myself. And we went on for two hours and just talked about anything and everything. And we even talked about a little bit of photography. Uh, if you got a couple hours to kill, you want to watch a fun show on YouTube. We had a blast and, um, check it out. It's, it's, it was, it was a great time. And I want to say thanks to Shane for having me on and, uh, you know, it was a Christmas show. It was a giveaway. So, and he gave away a Pixel 4a. Um, you know, he, he buys all these phones that he uses. And when he's done with them, when he's done testing them and comparing them and reviewing them and all that stuff, uh, he'll either sell them. Well, he tries to sell them, but because it was his Christmas show, he gave away the 4a. Uh, and it was a, it was a fun time. And <laughs> I got to tell you, Near the in the last say half hour or so, forty minutes of of the show, um, I don't want to spoil it, but just keep an eye on the names, like you see here, where it is right here. I got my name here, and Matt's got his name, Dave's got his name. Uh, keep an eye on the names. Some funny stuff happens there. <laughs> it's 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 just it's just a barrel of laughs. We had a great time. And I, I asked him if he's going to do it same time next week. No, no, it's going to be once a year for the Christmas show. But um, his regular live thing, I think, is going to be next week again. Um, and it's always entertaining. So I'll put a, sh- a link in the show notes to that video and uh, uh, just check it out. It was a lot of fun. So uh, I guess this is it now for this year, guys. Have a Merry Christmas and, uh, you know, stay safe over the holidays and and bring in the new year. Uh you know, with hopes and promises of uh, prosperity and good health. Thank you. Same to you, yeah, Greg. Thanks so much, Greg. You too. Yep. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Well, I guess uh, we'll see everybody next year.
Sounds good. All right. Bye. 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 You know, yeah, and I mean, all this and more coming up in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, did you, wa- try did you want to, did you want to write it down real quick? Do you have, yeah, well, you no, don't have to focus. About that, I didn't know if that way you wouldn't have to focus on the words. You only have to focus on the delivery then. Yeah. Well, I've got the notes right here, right? So oh, okay. Uh, I'm I'm trying not to look at them. I want to look at the camera, but um. Okay, I I got it. I got it. Here we go. One, two, three. Pixelmator photo. What good? What good is this? <laughs> what what good is it? <laughs> Worthless crap. <laughs> yeah, who, who, who needs it? Yes. Oh, I see a blooper reel coming. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay, one, two, three.